China or America? Which one is the AI superpower? This video is my summary and opinion of a book by Kei Fu Li, AI Superpowers, China, Silicon Valley, and the New World Order. I'm Matei, and I make videos about AI. The author argues that two transitions are happening within AI. First, that we are going from age of discovery to age of implementation. And second, that we are going from age of expertise to age of data. In the past, in the age of discovery and the age of expertise, America had a clear leg up because it's the home of the most elite researchers. Kay Fooley argues that the age of discovery is over because true innovations in AI are far in between. The last one was deep learning and we should not expect another one anytime soon. For the age of implementation, first we need abundant data and China has more data because it collects more data on its citizens than the United States. Second, we need hungry entrepreneurs and there is a culture of cutthroat competition in China where a lot of young people are looking to make their mark. Third, we need AI scientists, but we don't need elite AI scientists. We just need regular engineers who are able to do the groundwork to implement all the AI systems. And last, we need an AI friendly government. And here China has a clear advantage because the government of China is clearly pushing AI and wants to outcompete the United States. In the United States, there's a lot of political pressure on AI research uh, concerning the privacy and what it will do to the job market and ge general concern about the safety of AI. These concerns are a lot less talked about in China. Artificial intelligence is the fourth general purpose technology. The first one was the steam engine, the second one was electricity, and the third one were computers and internet. General purpose technology is a technology that affects every part of life. In this new AI world, will be a world where winner takes all. So one way to think about it, that AI is the new electricity, data is the new oil, cloud computing is the new grid, and Google is the new utility company. There will be four waves of AI, internet AI, business AI, perception AI, and autonomous AI. The first two are already happening, the other two are just starting out. I'm sure you interact with internet AI every day. Every time you watch TikTok, YouTube, or Netflix, which video is recommended next is the work of an AI engine behind it. Also, when you do shopping, the suggestions of which products are pushed to you in your search is also part of the AI system behind it. Here, the amount of data gives you a clear advantage. So the more data you have, the stronger your models are going to be. So in internet AI, I would say advantage China. Business AI means implementation of artificial intelligence in stocks, healthcare, and insurance. Here, AI can find weak correlations that are impossible to spot by humans and that gives those companies a competitive advantage. For this, you need a lot of high quality label data and I would give the advantage to the United States. The third one is perception AI. In other words, digitizing the physical world. In this way, we can put speech recognition, image processing, and virtual reality. The author argues that China is ahead in this wave because the Chinese consumers are more eager to embrace the new AI technologies. The American consumers are a little bit more hesitant and they're a lot more concerned about data privacy. And the last and final wave is autonomous AI, for example, self-driving cars and factory staffed robots. Here, the author also argues that China is pulling ahead, but I disagree on this one a little bit. See, in China, a lot of people are working in manufacturing and a lot of those manufacturing jobs actually came from the United States and now are located in China. But once we can replace all these workers with artificial intelligence, there is no need to have the factories in China. We can bring the manufacturing back to the United States. As somebody said, American robots work just as hard as Chinese robots and they don't form unions. One important piece of this puzzle is artificial general intelligence or AGI. Kei Fu Li thinks that AGI will require multiple breakthroughs and it's still far away. But I think a lot of people would disagree with this assessment and there's a lot of people who are working on AGI at this moment. And if you want to know more about this, I suggest you check out my previous video. But the author does think that we are going to face a real AI crisis and that will be caused by job displacement. He argues that in the next 10 to 20 years, anywhere between 40 and 50% of jobs in the United States could be automated. So this will result in huge economic inequality between the AI haves and the AI have nots. So it will be a disparity between the rich countries and the poor countries, but also within the countries themselves where you will have few people who are extremely rich because they got rich off of AI and a lot of people who are very poor. So in summary, which one is the AI superpower? At this moment, I think it's a tie. I think China is winning on AI implementation in everyday life, but I think United States or the West in general is winning on the important stuff. So for example, the business AI and the scientific AI like AlphaFold. For the future, let's say next 10 to 20 years, I think we have to separate in two different options. Option A assumes that there will be no AI breakthrough. If this is the case, I think China will be a clear winner. I think the implementation of current AI technology will be much faster in China than in everywhere else 
mostly due to their political climate and the welcoming of artificial intelligence. In the West and United States, there is a lot of resistance and concerns about data privacy and general AI safety. In option B, let's assume there will be a significant AI breakthrough. It could be artificial general intelligence or it could be something a little bit less powerful, but it would still be a sufficient breakthrough that would completely change the landscape. And in this case, I think United States or the West in general will pull ahead of China. But it also depends on how much of these breakthroughs are openly shared with the world, particularly with China. Because if these breakthroughs are openly shared with the world, including China, then China will just absorb these breakthroughs and implement them into systems and that will negate the advantage of the breakthrough. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.